Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And on uh, today's video, I thought I'd discuss how um, uh, to catch the big red drum, surf fishing in North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, and kind of the Mid-Atlantic states. Go enjoy, and I'll even admit I was a little skeptical or hesitant in regard to making this video because the content is already out there. You kind of have to dig for it. However, I find there's also a lot of other content on the tackle for this kind of fishery, but it's also meant for other states and it's definitely different from how it's done over here. So hopefully y'all enjoy and I hope y'all take something away from this. So I guess for something like this, I guess we'll start with the reel. And the reel I have here, as you see on other videos on my channel, is a Pen Fathom 2. Uh, yeah, it's the second generation in the 12 size. It has the uh, magnetic brake on the side. And a lot of guys like to throw conventional for these fish on our part of the coast. Simply because uh, you can get a better distance with it. And obviously they like the ones that don't have the level lines on them because it doesn't slow down their cast. So I guess next would be the line. Um, so on what you're seeing on the reel right now is actually my shock knot or my shock leader. And that shock leader is used to help throw a bigger, heavier weight. I guess I should go ahead and strip all this off to show you the line. Uh, below the main line is actually a 20 pound monofilament. Uh, it's Berkeley Prospect Chrome. That is a good line to use on a lot of guys use that line and the reason why guys are using monofilament is not necessarily the debate between mono versus braid it goes back to the debate versus of a conventional reel or a spinning reel and as i said earlier a lot of guys like conventional just because it's a smoother casting and you can potentially get more distance and in order to achieve that with an eight ounce weight um you want smoother casts. You don't want the haywire nature of braid, which can often clump up on the reel and cause bigger problems than what it needs to be. So you need to go for a smoother casting monofilament line, such as this, when you're throwing, say, eight ounces. So go with a monofilament. And oftentimes you'll see guys go out there with braid on like a pier or so, and, it's, and they'll get confused. Um, and like i said earlier it goes back to smoother casting and also what kind of reel you're using and if you're in a crowd say you're on a pier or you're at buxton point and you're just fishing in a big crowd the ones that are throwing braid will be causing the problems because there will be more guys throwing conventionals out there than spinning and they need that monofilament to throw a smoother cast and to be able to get the distance that they kind of want to be able to achieve. So hope y'all take that into consideration. And so these are the rigs that we like to tie. Starts, and yes, I have two shown here because I have two very different scenarios as to when I like to use these. And yes, they are the same thing. There are two variations of the same thing. A big 10 ounce circle hook, a very short leader going to a swivel but um, the difference is that this is 50 pound and I would make this shorter if I could, but um, I didn't have any tied, so I just tied this up real quick for this video. But this is 50 pound monofilament and this is a 100 pound monofilament. And I will use the 100 pound monofilament almost exclusively in the surf and particularly in an area that I know might have some bigger bluefish and that could Granted, a hundred pound might is very likely not on a saver from a bluefish, but I will trust a hundred pound more than I would say 50 pound. And 50 pound is almost exclusively going to be used on a pier. And the reason so is because you often can hook a shark out there, and 50 pound will break much quicker than a hundred pound would on a shark. So, and you're not getting into everyone's way, you're not taking too long to fight a fish. And granted, I definitely do not want to bring a shark over the rail on a pier. So that's the reason why that's the case. And the reason why these are really short is because it's for better casting distance. Um, some people on YouTube will say they tie short leaders. Well, they're nowhere near as short as say this. Granted, if you can tie something, if you can get something tied as short as this, I would say do it because it's going to give you better casting distance. 
And as far as the brand of hooks, um, I've used several brands of hooks and I've done just fine. Um, this is a Gamakatsu and uh, this is an owner and they've worked both fine for me. So it's no big deal. Don't overthink your hooks. So. And so this right here is the rig. This is the same bite leader I showed you earlier, but it's actually tied on to the shock knot. And so what you do is you take, you put a bead first onto your shock knot, then you put a sinker slide or a weight holder on next. This is the one that I prefer right here. This is kind of this twist lock style. And then you tie it straight to your bite leader as shown here. Um, the reason why this is effective is if you are, say you do have um, that 50 pound leader I showed you earlier tied on and you need to break off shark, in this case, you can keep your weight. So that saves your weight, saves you a little bit of money on that. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And so this is the rod that I like to use, um, as you've seen in some of my prior videos. It's a CTS S7. On their website, it's also referred to as the 1306, and it's rated anywhere from 8 to a 14 ounce lead. Um, now, as far as this rod goes, um, this is what I will take out on a pier. Um, it's a little bit, it's a stiffer, much more stout rod. It's a 60-40 split, and um, it can just kind of help you get that fish in a little bit quicker, so you can kind of get out of everyone's way. Um, it's one reason why I like it, and two, um, it can also... Since it's a much more stout rod, and if you're throwing such a heavier lead, it does help getting a little bit of a heavier lead, like a 10 ounce out there. So if you're in a rough surf setting where eight ounces is tumbling on you, this would be a good rod to use out there for that. And yes, I did wrap this rod myself. Um, I usually just wrap only rods only for myself. Um, obviously there's other guys that build rods on the Outer Banks as well. I mean, I think you all know I imagine most of my viewers know who some of those guys are and they make great stuff. So if you're looking for one of these rods, um, dial up those guys. They'll make you a good rod for that. So this next rod is actually a Rod Geeks 12 foot 6 to 16 ounce blank. Um, it's another one that I wrap myself. And um, this one I actually decided to do a decorative wrap on. Um, I'm not as good as some of those guys I mentioned earlier that are on the Outer Banks, but this is just... Um, this is a wrap that I did and I'm pretty happy with it. It turned out pretty well. The chevrons are actually pretty straight and I'm pretty happy with how the colors turned out. Um, and so the reason why I showed this one is that it's much, much lighter than the other rod I showed earlier, that CTS 1306. And this is a really good beach rod. Um, granted, yeah, I do think the CTS, they have their own version of this rod, but this is just a raw geek, a cheaper one. And just kind of wanted to show that this kind of rod would be a little bit more better for a beach setting. And granted, when you're in a setting that is six to eight ounces is all you need to hold. Um, it's a much lighter rod. Um, you'll be able to hold it all day and be just perfectly comfortable with it. So you will not see me bring this rod out on a pier for that very reason. Um, just because I feel like I'm, when I'm on a pier, I'd like to have a heavier rod just to muscle a fish in quicker. So... Other than that, um, I believe that is about everything that I'd kind of want to show you guys. Um, yeah, it's a pretty short video, but it doesn't need to be super long. These fish are not that hard to go after. I mean, don't overcomplicate them. If you get skunked one day, you might have just picked a bad spot. Overall, guys, that's it. Um, thank you guys for watching. I hope y'all took something away from this. Do not overthink these fish. And we'll see you in the next video.